uh, welcome, uh, dear Professor uh, Uwe Sauer. Uh, Professor Uwe Sauer is uh, the, uh, uh, the academic leader, maybe other uh, leadership also exists with storage, but that as far as I know, uh, just uh, uh, with his uh, colleagues and his activities, uh, the storage became an important thing. And as Eurosolar, we were organizing with Düsseldorf for years. He is the conference chair, uh, the main person of this conference, International Renewable Energy Storage. For these efforts, we would like to thank you. And uh, now everybody is talking about storage after 13 years uh, in Turkey also, the industry. Uh, now the floor is yours. Uh, we would like to uh, hear your uh, contribution on um, the story. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so thank you very much for the very kind introduction and for the invitation to join this uh, conference event. Uh, it's a pity that we cannot really meet, but uh, I'm happy that we have this uh, way at least to exchange uh, some things. I try to start my presentation here. I hope you can see the presentation now. Is this a case? Yes. yes, perfect. Thank you very much. Perfect. Um, all right. So, yeah. So, I, I would like to share some thoughts with you. Um, and uh, before I go more on batteries and storage, I would also look like a little bit more on the uh, energy situation we uh, just have. As you know, um, Germany would like to go for zero emissions in 2045, so five years earlier maybe than the European Commission. In any case, uh, this is ambitious, but it is absolutely necessary. As we all know, climate change is uh, rapidly going forward. And um, I would like to share this complex <laughs> graph with you just to, to make clear that our energy system in the future will be really interconnected. So the electrical sector, the thermal heat sector, um, the fuels, but uh, also the gas sector. And when we talk about energy storage, we should keep in mind that in each of these different elements, we have energy storage capacities. We have heat storage, uh, we have gas storage, huge uh, amount, huge capacities. For sure, we have also electrical storage systems, more decentralized maybe in batteries or more centralized in things like pumped hydro. Uh, power stations or in um, uh, combined uh, in, in gas storage systems then with uh, re um, with the power generation units either fuel cells or uh, turbines and um, this is what the things what makes the things really complex because um, in a system you should not have too much storage because if you have too much storage then the price for services in storage decreases so much that nobody really can uh, pay or can earn a sufficient amount of money and um, therefore whenever thinking about storage it is very important to think about all the complex system including all the demand side management for example which also replaces uh, to a certain amount uh, storage capacity uh, so people often call for lots of storage but uh, as we know still at the moment the uh, storage capacities are relatively small simply because uh, there's no market price for this and this means it is not so much necessary yet, but it will come. Yeah? So re share of renewables in Germany exceeds now 50% uh, roughly. And this is the point uh, where storage systems uh, really must are absolutely necessary for the stability of the system. I just want to mention that even in the future, we will still import and, uh, energy in countries like in Central Europe uh, from all over the world um, where we, we have to rely on the uh, import of uh, fuels, for example, or for any hydrogen products. Uh, so um, we will not make these things, or we cannot make these things in Central Europe on our own. So these are the plans for reduction of, of CO2 emissions. You can see the bars until 2020. These are the numbers, 2021 increased again somewhat because 2020 was low due to the Corona crisis. But then you see for 2030 reduction to minus 65 compared with 1990 and then going down. And this is really short. Yeah? So the, um, all, the, all we know here, the things which could be, could have been done since more than two decades maybe. So we had the technologies. Uh, now things really seem to start. 
but uh, so late that the gradients now in, um, at which uh, changes must ha happen are extremely steep. And uh, we will see how this really works. Yeah, so these are just the numbers uh, looking towards uh, 2030. Yeah, so 37% um, reductions in industry, uh, uh, you had it in the presentation, I think, on energy consumption in industry, 60% in energy sector, more than 40% in houses, house heating, uh, house cooling, and uh, in, in mobility, and this on a scale of now uh, just, sorry, <coughs> sorry, um, just eight years um, uh, left. Okay. These are the plans. These are the plans of our national government uh, to increase now really wind and photovoltaics, as you can see here. So um, the installation rate should be increased dramatically, and uh, also the overall capacity should increase by a factor of three to four until 2030. So you can see in the end of this of this decade that the implementation should be more than or around 20 gigawatt of photovoltaics per year and more than 15 gigawatts of wind turbines on and offshore per year. So um, uh, just to have a short look into one of these sectors, into the mobility, because this is associated a lot with energy storage as well. So this is how the markets uh, developed uh, in um, electric vehicles in the, in the last years. And you can see um, here in um, 2021, the worldwide market share was uh, in the range of uh, eight and a half percent and uh, more than six and a half million electric vehicles are now uh, on the road, registered on the road worldwide. And you can see uh, where this happens. Lots of this is in China, not too much in the United States and in Europe. So this is where the things really go forward. But what does it mean uh, when looking to Germany? Uh, because I have these numbers in more details. You can see at the end of 2021, in total, we had roughly 1.2 million electric vehicles, roughly half of them uh, full electric vehicles and half of them plug-in hybrids. And when this transferring this to energy storage, yeah, you can see that the number of uh, uh, that all the electric yeah. vehicles that, that all the electric vehicles in Germany in total had a battery capacity of 40 gigawatt hour. Yeah, to, just to, to give you a relation, uh, the overall capacity of our pumped hydropower stations, which are today re, uh, responsible for grid stability, is also 40 gigawatt hours. Yeah, so with only um, 1.2 million cars, which is uh, just 2.5% of the overall cars in Germany, we already have the same capacity of battery of, of storage capacity on the road than in our pumped hydropower stations. And when we look to the charging power, we see it's even higher. We have uh, uh, we could charge and discharge these batteries uh, with 50 gigawatt. Yeah, the pumped hydropower stations in total have six gigawatt of uh, turbine capacity. So um, this is um, this shows us uh, that the uh, cars on the road will become very soon uh, a major player in um, storage capacity, and we should make them available by these power to home and our power to uh, grid um, uh, technologies, because otherwise we will lose lots of potential, and we have to pay it twice at the end of the day. Uh, the batteries and the cars are already paid. And uh, letting them serve to the grid to a certain amount is not really harming them too much. Uh, so uh, everybody can do this um, and uh, could help to in in integrate renewable energies much better. And we also can see if we look to uh, overall energy storage installations in Germany of new technologies, let me say. Yeah? So in uh, home storage systems, I think we will have a presentation uh, afterwards on this on industrial storage, large scale storage system, and then compared with the vehicle sector, we can see the orange parts here. These are stationary storage systems and the upper parts, again, the numbers I have shown before is what is in the cars. So 10% is in stationary and 90% is in the cars. Yeah, so, and it's not unlikely that this uh, might look also in the future, uh, more or less. Um, this is not including traditional storage uh, applications like uninterruptible power supplies, starter batteries in cars, forklift trucks, or mobile communication devices or something like this. 
So um, the uh, energy storage is uh, always depends for sure on the energy market. And uh, as this is really a pressing issue, I would like to share some, uh, some numbers on this as well. Um, these are prices for electricity on our power exchange. And uh, even these are numbers uh, for Germany and uh, some of the other neighboring countries uh, uh, depend on this, but this is quite similar all over Central Europe. You can see in the past, uh, we had uh, power prices in the range of 20 to 40, 50 euros per megawatt hour, uh, two to four cents per euro cent per kilowatt hour. By the end of last year, so independent and before the uh, Russian war in the Ukraine, uh, the price raised by a factor of four to five. Uh, and, and then it goes down sometimes and it goes up again and so on. But uh, it is uh, seemed to stabilize at the moment at a very high level. So electricity prices uh, on the power exchange, and this is especially a challenge for the uh, industry, um, has tripled or went up by a factor of four or five. And uh, part of this depends on the CO2 prices, the European trading uh, mechanisms, but mainly because of the gas prices. Uh, but indeed, the um, European trading um, of the CO2 now works more or less, where it was more like 20 euros per ton over years. It is now raised up to a peak of 90 euros uh, at the end of the last, uh, or no, in, in February this year. And just to give you an idea, a uh, lignite power plant in Germany produces or has cost overall cost of maybe three euro cent in power production. Uh, 90 euros per ton additional means an additional 10 euro cent just for buying the certificates. Yeah? So the uh, lignite power plants are now at 13 euro cent per kilowatt hour. This is what we want, no doubt, yeah? because we want to uh, shift the, um, or we want to, to move the coal out of the market, no, no question. But at the end of the day, somebody has to pay. And this makes a lot of social pressure also just uh, right now. And the most important thing is really the gas. Yeah? And we can see the gas price raised already at the end of last year again, before we had discussions about embargoes and so on with, um, with Russia. It peaked again at the beginning of the Ukrainian war. But uh, we can see that uh, here uh, in the past, we had prices in the range of 20 euros per megawatt hour in gas. And now even the futures for 2025 are three times as high and so for 2023, they are four to five times high, higher than what we had in the last years. And this is really a challenge. But what is most important, and this is a very important message uh, for me, um, this is not because we are using renewables. Uh, so it's exactly the other way around. What you can see here is all the data points of the price at the power exchange, the price on the y-axis and on the x-axis, you can see how much the renewables fed into the grid at this certain point in time. And you can clearly see that the price at the power exchange decreases when we have more renewables. Yeah, so um, for sure, people now see there is energy transition, more renewables, prices increase, so the renewables must be um, the bad ones. But that's not the case. Uh, the only way is uh, to get rid of these very high prices to increase the installation of renewables even faster and um, uh, to really make, um, yeah, let us really use the significantly lower production prices of the renewables. And as you know, prices for renewable power generation in Turkey are even a factor of two lower uh, than in Germany because you simply have more sun and in many areas of the country also more wind. Yeah? So, um, I think this is a message we all should um, transfer. What this changes with regard to storage system, to operation of storage systems is on the other hand, uh, quite interesting. This is a week from 2018 and you can see in gray, this is a share of power generated by fossil, uh, fossil fuel power plants. The green comes from renewables. Yeah? So it's an arbitrary week. And uh, the red curve is the price at the power exchange that they had market. And we can see if we look to uh, spreads within a day, 
Yeah, um, we uh, saw spreads in the range of 35 euros per megawatt hour, so three and a half euro cent uh, per kilowatt hour. And there is no storage system which we can operate uh, on an economic basis if we have just three and a half cent difference between buying and selling electricity. And at another point of time, 28, 29, 21, so no way. Yeah. When we now look to what has changed, uh, and uh, this is an arbitrary week at the end of March of this year, and uh, same type of uh, diagram. And now we see at a for sure much higher price level, which is not so good, but uh, for with regard to storage systems, we now have spreads uh, between 100 and 150 euros per megawatt hour. And this uh, makes it also interesting and shows that there is a need and the demand for energy storage. And um, we will see um, if people rely that this will continue for a while. However, not that easy. If we have a week with a higher share of renewables, then the spreads are already lower again. Yeah? So the renewables somehow um, decrease the income that the storage system operator may, uh, may get. So a little bit about um, the lithium ion battery technologies, uh, because this is a main technology we really uh, have. Um, the um, lithium ion batteries is a dominating technology these days, uh, mainly driven forward, uh, especially for, for, by the auto automotive industry. The uh, production capacities increase dramatically. The raw materials really get uh, a, a, a difficulty, yeah? and especially in lithium and in nickel. Um, we might have shortcomings in the coming two, three years, not on a million term run or long term run. There is sufficient material available, but the capacities in the mines um, uh, is not high enough because um, the car manufacturers just recently increased um, their production targets. Um, and in the past, they were very, um, um, yeah, they, they did not really ask for high capacities and therefore the operators of mines were not willing to invest uh, already uh, up front. Now we will really see probably some shortcomings and we already see now increasing prices for the raw materials. So the strong decrease in price we have seen in the last years for lithium ion batteries will probably come to a stop for, for a while. Uh, maybe even increasing prices due to the raw materials. Nevertheless, uh, I would like to point out that lithium ion batteries is a is more like a family of different technology of, of different batteries where different materials can be used. Today we typically have graphite on the one electrode. We have the lithium which it travels back and forth. And we have a cathode material which depends on lithium metal oxide. And the metal is typically nickel, manganese, and cobalt in different um, shares. And um, you may have uh, short uh, abbreviations like NMC, which is nickel, manganese, cobalt. LCA is lithium, cobalt, aluminium. The LMO is lithium, manganese, oxide. Um, so all this is possible for sure. We hope that maybe for stationary sector, we can get more towards the lithium manganese oxide because these would be nickel and cobalt free batteries, but uh, we don't have yet the sufficient uh, stability uh, with regard to lifetime on this material. But um, I would think maybe within this decade, uh, this could uh, become a very interesting uh, technology. And then what is in, uh, more and more comes on the market are these nickel rich materials. So the main target uh, is first of all to, uh, the, uh, to reduce the cobalt content. And where we had, uh, let me say something like 100% cobalt when lithium ion batteries were introduced to the market about 30 years ago, we are now down to 10%. Yeah? So 90% of the cobalt is already um, not, it's not needed anymore. And uh, this for sure takes also pressure out of this market. And um, there are also cobalt free technologies like lithium iron phosphate, for example. Um, the energy density is somewhat lower, but we even can see that these batteries uh, uh, come back or return to the automotive market. Because in the automotive market, uh, even their highest energy densities are not really the highest, uh, the highest priority, especially in the small and medium sized cars. And therefore, the lower cost lithium iron phosphate batteries uh, get into this. 
And for stationary applications, this is a quite uh, uh, idle technology, um, more safe than the uh, nickel manganese cobalt based uh, materials. And um, here, um, yeah, so a, a good uh, technology for stationary applications. On the anode, uh, we get more and more silicon into the system, which increases the capacity quite so dramatically. Silicon is 100% uh, silicon is difficult uh, for technical reasons, but uh, this is um, what increases energy densities more and more. We are now have uh, commercial products with 280 watt hours per kilogram. And um, this is um, more than double than what, uh, what, what uh, lithium ion battery showed um, 30 years ago. So the energy density increase is also uh, remarkable uh, here. And then there are other batteries like lithium titanate a battery with very high power ratings. Uh, here you can, there are lithium titanate batteries where you can take from a one kilowatt hour battery, 100 kilowatt of power. And uh, we have seen batteries with uh, cycle life of 100,000 cycles, full cycles. Um, so this is remarkable, but much more expensive than the NMC batteries, much lower energy density, and therefore only suitable in very high power applications. And what people talk about a lot is about uh, metallic, um, or, or, let me say, solid state batteries. And the idea of these solid state batteries is to have a pure lithium um, anode, no graphite, no silicon anymore, and to use a uh, polymer or a ceramic uh, separator. So no organic um, uh, liquid electrolyte anymore. And by combining this with uh, metal, uh, we then have here uh, much more uh, or potentially, hopefully potentially more safe battery, somewhat higher energy density. And some people think this might be a game changer. I don't think so um, for this point in time. I'm more, much more uh, skeptic uh, that this will really happen soon uh, for several reasons. Um, but uh, yeah, with the, uh, today's uh, technologies, we can be quite uh, happy uh, in any way. Um, there are lots of activities to build new factories. Um, European Commission and many of the member states um, uh, really press uh, for uh, European production sites, uh, some of them driven by the Asian uh, manufacturers, which come today mainly from South Korea, from China and from Japan. And they all come also with factories to here, but also European companies uh, want to bring, uh, want to set up their own factories with uh, um, own knowledge and know-how uh, to get a little bit less dependent on the Asian market, uh, because uh, we just see these days, especially in Germany, how, how, how dangerous it could be if we depend too much on one sim single country like it is in energy issues uh, these days uh, with Russia. So when we look to, to the batteries, we have really to say um, there's quite little investment in other battery technologies, uh, like um, uh, power to heat storage systems, redox flow, high temperature, sodium sulfur, sodium nickel chloride, um, or advanced supercapacitors and lead acid batteries. There are some spendings, but um, not at all in the orders of magnitude uh, of um, uh, the lithium ion batteries. And this is why these other technologies will have it very difficult to get into the market these days, because um, main parameter is price and price depends of economy of scale and economy of scale is only in the lithium sector. Uh, yeah, in the lithium sector coming first or came in, in the first years from the um, portable devices and today's from the automotive industry. What may come also um, is uh, sodium based batteries. So replacing lithium by sodium um, they have energy densities, maybe like lithium iron phosphate batteries, but no lithium, no cobalt, no nickel. Um, we just don't know yet uh, if these batteries can achieve the same cycle lifetime lives, uh, which would be necessary for stationary applications. And some strategies to reduce cost of batteries, and here I would like to show some slides which were presented by a Tesla uh, two years ago, um, and uh, they show that by changing in all things a little bit, uh, cell design, manufacturing, anode and cathode materials integration, there is still a significant potential to reduce cost, which is a little bit uh, contradicted at the moment by the increasing raw material cost. Uh, but uh, generally, 
um, different type of designs uh, which allow larger cylindrical cells uh, with better heat um, transfer um, going from a wet uh, coating process uh, in the battery manufacturing to a dry coating process could reduce the overall uh, production facilities uh, dramatically. Yeah? So this is such a pro uh, dry pr process. And here you can see, yeah? so this is size of a factory for the coating and drying of electrodes uh, today. And this is where they would like to get to. Yeah? So a factor of 10 reduction in size and in energy uh, consumption for this part. So the coating itself and the uh, drying of the electrodes. And what also is important, uh, we will see more and more specialized batteries. Uh, so the batteries are not the same anymore. Uh, batteries which are used today and typical passenger cars are not suited for stationary applications anymore because their cycle life is simply too short. 500 to 800 ci full cycles is not sufficient for stationary application, but by far enough for the passenger cars. And on the other hand, we may see full size uh, trucks uh, also based on batteries. These trucks really need, again, very high cycle lives and uh, um, so this is probably the same technology which will be used in stationary applications as well. But more and more, the batteries differentiate for the different markets uh, because the volumes are very high anyway. And so Tesla says, and uh, we, we could agree on this somehow, that there is an additional potential of reducing the price for large scale production by more than a factor of uh, two. Uh, again, if the raw materials for sure increase in price, uh, then this goes in, in, in the other direction. So what we can say is energy transition and climate change should, should now really accelerate, uh, as I said at the beginning, much too late, but uh, um, and uh, this also will require storage capacities, first of all, in the short term uh, range, uh, which means uh, batteries, uh, demand side management, uh, local heat storage and so on. And um, but, but by the end of this decade, if we come in Germany to 80% of renewables, uh, which is uh, the target of our na national government, uh, then we start to need also the long term storage uh, systems, uh, which allow us uh, to uh, bridge uh, even um, dark um, and uh, or periods with low sunshine and uh, low wind speed for up to three weeks. And this is what we need. Roughly, the uh, simulations show us this uh, starting at 80% of renewables. So already by the end of uh, this decade, so just eight years from now, we also would need use gas storage capacities with hydrogen or methane um, for these purposes. Um, the high energy prices are a real challenge and threat for the society and for the acceptance of the energy transition. I really fear that the people really say uh, this is all due to the change of the energy system, what we have, and it is not. Yeah? It is the fossil fuels which bring us in this uh, uh, very difficult situation. It's not the renewables, but uh, um, it won't be easy to... Um, um, really bring this into the society because there are still very strong pressure groups uh, which uh, try to lobby for old technologies like coal or nuclear. The uh, battery capacity in electric vehicles, as I have shown, grows exponentially. Uh, so huge capacities will be available here. The European Commission just uh, thinks about a European um, uh, Parliament already has decided to phase out um, new uh, combustion engine cars by 2035. Yeah, it was just decided this week. Um, it's not finally the law, but um, most probably it will become the law. Um, higher price spread as shown on the energy exchange um, yeah, somehow um, brings the storage market forward. We need these spreads for uh, really having an also an economic uh, um, business case for storage systems. Uh, and so mainly the new storage capacities will come from batteries uh, for the short term things. The overall worldwide capacity should grow to more than 1000 gigawatt hours a year in 2025 and another factor of three more towards 2030. And um, lithium ion batteries, including the lithium iron phosphate, will still dominate for a long while. Sodium batteries could complement this uh, to a certain amount. And 
from all the other battery technologies uh, which really have uh, market is that asset batteries. Uh, so this is still there and used in several applications and all the other technologies really have difficulties to get into these markets, mainly because they are missing the economy of scales. Yeah, and with this, I would like to thank you very much for your attention. And once again, thanks for the invitation for this presentation. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Professor. It's a pleasure for us to have you here and learn the recent state of battery storage. Thank you very much. Um, there are, uh, let me see if there is one question over here. Um, no, Nikos Fintitatis says, congratulations and uh, thank you from uh, Academy of Architecture from Greece. Um, okay, so my, my question is, I'm, I'm, I have a mini grid now in my house, photovoltaic panels, heat pump, yep. and hybrid UPS, and hopefully I will get the permission to put my uh, photovoltaic panels, but I'm looking for a uh, battery. Uh, so I, I need your, I will write to you, I need your suggestions, uh, what, which one to use, uh, because uh, that's the only thing I didn't buy yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, at the end of the day, for, for most of these applications, but probably Ewald Waffenschmidt will talk about this uh, also in a minute, uh, um, lithium iron phosphate batteries would be a good choice uh, for this. For my home. For it's, your home. For, yeah. for, for your application. Um, if you have an electric vehicle, then you also could think about uh, combining um, the house directly in a vehicle to home concept. Uh -huh. Because um, when we look to the stationary batteries in PV systems at the moment in Germany, we have about 10 kilowatt hours roughly. As a, uh -huh. Whereas in a car, we have 70 yeah, was in yeah, yeah. Volkswagen ID3. So um, the average energy consumption in a German household is 10 kilowatt hours a day. So mm -hmm. the car has energy for a week. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you do, if you use only a small share of this, it already becomes very in interesting. Yeah? But uh, I don't want to talk too much about the things Eberhard has prepared. <laughs> from, oh yeah, yeah. But uh, I should yeah. ask him also. I need a battery, and I need I to know how much does it cost. And if there is <laughs> an agent over here, I want to have your suggestions but but lithium iron phosphate is a good choice in okay the, now i know that this efficiency and, and uh, safety and so on okay lithium iron phosphate and i hope somebody from germany is selling it over here in turkey probably i will check thank you very much professor thanks yeah, thank you very much great pleasure yes thank you Ho hope Hojam, you there is one question before yes. we um, send him go maybe uh, professor okay. uh, shanaroptik ask something Okay, our professor Schenner, oh, he's gone? No, he's gone. No, no, he, he asked that uh, for sodium ion batteries, what uh, are the other problems apart from cycling time? Yeah, yeah but uh, professor, uh, our professor is gone, I think. Huh? Is he here? No, no, I'm here. So no, I okay, he, good, good. He, he okay. asked the question. I, I can say just a few, few words about this. So the, the, sodium, I, the sodium ion batteries are not really yet available commercially. Uh, a big player like um, uh, CRTL, biggest uh, battery manufacturer in China, um, has announced to bring these batteries on the market, and there are prototypes and so on, but they are not really yet uh, uh, in, the, in the mass markets, and uh, so it's difficult uh, really to see uh, exactly what the performances are at high and low temperatures, uh, how the lifetime is, depends on, uh, on, on things like temperature and current rates and, and so on, so we haven't seen them uh, yet uh, really. Um, so um, this is uh, why it is still difficult to make final statements on the sodium ion batteries, but from the general chemistry and uh, from the way how they are designed, they um, have a good potential um, to uh, at least uh, have the performance of the uh, uh, quite similar to the lithium iron phosphate batteries. And we will see if we can achieve three, four, five thousand lifetime cycles. This is not clear yet, and therefore we really need uh, products uh, which are produced and commercially, and that which we can put on our test benches. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, my thank you.